My name is Janine Fainajutli. I'm a member of the Wontag Wichen First Nation with Czech and Dutch ancestry. My practice is mostly performance-based and I work a lot in sound as well as video, collaboration, and residue. One medium that I was working with for a number of years was actually caribou antler dust. I've done performances where I've taken an angle grinder and ground down caribou antler and the dust settles everywhere. It settles on people's shoulders, it settles on the ground. The dust forms a fugitive image and it's not able to be pinned or placed under a glass case. It's not static. There's something really powerful about the messiness of sound. Sound has an ability to do something that no other mediums can in that it seeps and bleeds and permeates spaces and bodies. Sound is powerful because it has the ability to migrate and that migration, that bleeding through spaces also ties or connects to me with the relationship with the porcupine caribou herd. You know, I wanna, I wanna rattle walls. I wanna rattle bodies and steel and everything in the perimeters. And, you know, sound, sound has that ability. So for me, textile work or sewing is really important to me and my practice, to my communities. And it's something that doesn't always make its way into the gallery space. And that is also really important. Like some things aren't for viewers in these spaces and some things are only meant to be seen by community members back home or by the land. And this question of like who, what is the sender? Who, what is the receiver? And do they need to be human? screening films for trees, or um, doing performances just for the land. What are the parameters for, for a performance? And does there need to be a human audience? The piece of emery paper or the piece of steel or the antler dust become the thing that holds the space of that gesture, but the gesture isn't always meant to be seen. <laughs>